This video is all about array operations, so let's start by creating some arrays to experiment on. I'll call the first one A, and I'll make a 2x2 two two array with the elements 1 and 2 in the first row, and 3 and 4 in the second row. I'll create another array, B, and let's make that one 1 and 0 in the first row, and minus 3 and 4 in the second row. As usual, if you want to have a look at these, you can either just type the name in the command window and view it there, or you can double click in the variable workspace to have a look in spreadsheet format. We can perform any type of matrix algebra with these arrays, so for example we can add A and B, in which case the elements in corresponding positions are just added. So for example, this element here is just given by adding A11 and B11. We can multiply either of these two arrays by a constant. And we can combine addition and multiplication by a constant to get a general linear operation. For example, we can do 2 times A minus 4 times B. The element in position ij is given by 2 times aij minus 4 times bij. Arrays which don't have the same dimensions cannot be combined this way. For example, the expression a plus 1 colon 3 is meaningless because array a is 2 by 2. Notice that MATLAB gives us an error which is very clear here. It says we can't add these two because the matrix dimensions must agree. These are essentially just matrix operations, so if we wanted to add 1 to every element in matrix A, then we should create an array full of 1s with the same dimensions as matrix A. A useful command for doing these kind of operations in MATLAB is the built-in function 1s, which creates an array of all 1s. If it's a square array, then we can just type the number of rows or columns, like this. If it's a non-square array, then we can specify the number of rows and columns separately. MATLAB will accept either two inputs here, or a vector of row and column numbers. So if we want to subtract 3 from every value in matrix A, then we can use A minus 3 times 1's size A. since the command size A gives the vector containing the number of rows and the number of columns of A. In fact, MATLAB does allow you to add a scalar to a matrix, which is convenient. So to replicate the behaviour given above, we can just do A minus 3. However, it's important to recognise that this expression isn't mathematically correct. Now let's look at array multiplication. We'll start with an example. Suppose that I want to do a to the power of 2. This result is equivalent to a multiplied by a. And in MATLAB, the multiplication symbol is reserved for matrix multiplication. So, the result is obtained by multiplying corresponding rows and columns, as shown. Similarly, if we create a column vector, b, then we can calculate a times b because the inner dimensions agree. The number of columns in a is the same as the number of rows in b. The result will be a 2 by 1 column vector. We have the first row of a multiplied by column vector b and the second row of a multiplied by column vector b. We'll try to multiply b by itself now. Since b is a 2 by 1 array, we can see that the inner dimensions don't agree, so the calculation isn't possible. MATLAB gives a very helpful error message which identifies the problem.
Matrix multiplication and the matrix power are actually functional operations. For example, the matrix multiplication operator, the asterisk symbol, is a shorthand way of using the built-in function m times. So a times b is equivalent to m times a b. Similarly, a to the power of 2 is equivalent to m power, that's the matrix power, of a, 2. Of course, m power a2 is just the same as m times a, a. Suppose now, though, that we want to calculate the matrix C, in which every element is the square of the corresponding element in matrix A. Instead of the matrix power function, we can use the power function. Or instead of using the matrix times function, we can use the times function. So it's m power and m times for matrix multiplication, and it's power and times for element-wise scalar multiplication. The element-wise operations can also be performed by prefixing the matrix multiplication symbols with a dot. So where we would write this expression for the matrix power, we can add a dot here to do element-wise power. Similarly, we can write a dot asterisk a to perform element-wise multiplication. Element-wise division is also possible. So, for example, a dot divide a will just give a matrix of ones because every element in matrix A will be divided by itself. If you try this expression, it will give a result, but at the moment we haven't talked about matrix division, and I want to leave this idea alone for the time being. For element-wise multiplication, the size of the multiplied objects must agree. So, for example, A dot star B Scalar multiplication between matrix A and column vector B is impossible because the dimensions of these two objects don't agree. A was a 2 by 2 array and B was a 2 by 1 array. Element-wise multiplication between B and itself, though, is of course possible. So we've had a look at some functions in MATLAB. The m power, m times, power and times functions. The last thing that we'll do here is have a look at some more of the basic functions that we can use in MATLAB. Most of the built-in MATLAB functions do accept arrays as input. So for example, the square root function, squirt, can be applied to a single element, or it can be applied to an array, for example a, to get the square root of every element. The trig functions, sin, cos, tan, and so on, can also be used on arrays. and a couple of functions that are worth looking at are the exponent function and the logarithm function. We'll look at the exponent function first. Suppose that you want the natural exponent e, that number which is approximately 2.7. Let's try typing e in MATLAB and see what happens. We get an error. MATLAB doesn't have e defined as a constant. We can get the natural exponent by typing exp of 1. exp is the exponent function in MATLAB, and so we're going to calculate the exponent raised to the power of 1 here. exp of 2 raises the exponent to the power of 2. We could do that by defining a constant, e equals exp of 1, and then calculating e squared. But the nice thing about the exponent function is that it also operates on arrays. So for example, we can define an array, I'll call it uppercase E, and let's have the exponent function applied to the array 1, 2, 
in the first row, 3, 4 in the second row. Now let's take a look at the logarithm function. Log. A very important thing to note about the log function in MATLAB is that it gives the natural logarithm, not the logarithm in base 10. The reason for this is that the natural logarithm is by far the most commonly used base in mathematical and scientific applications. Let's verify that log does give the natural logarithm by calculating log of our array E. We should get 1, 2, 3, 4. If you want the logarithm in base 10, you can use the log 10 function. Let's do log 10 of just a row vector, 10 and 100. A method of calculating the logarithm in any base is described in the notes. We'll encounter a lot of functions in MATLAB and you won't be able to remember them all. Often, if you want to do something in MATLAB and you can't remember how, it's easy just to perform an internet search, for example a Google search, for what you want to do. If you know the function name but you're not sure how to use it, then the best way is to look it up in the MATLAB help guide. The help guide gives usage information for the functions and it also often has examples. Let's test it out now by looking up the size function, which we've already seen. The easiest way I find to look up functions in the help guide is to type them in the command window, then highlight them, and press F1 on the computer keyboard. So we can see here that we've got some usage information and that there are several different ways of using the size function. So if x is an array, then d equals size x will give us the sizes of each dimension of array x in a vector. If we request two outputs like this, then we'll get the row number and the column number as two scalar variables. Scrolling down, we can see that there are a lot of examples to have a look at.